So in today's video, I'm going to get the 12 volt actuator mounted and aligned in order to operate the choke. And just drop a little bit of solder on there. And there we have a working backup light. Connect the solar charge controller to the battery. The choke is right here. This is the run position to the forward of the generator and that is the start position. The travel on this actuator isn't quite that distance so I'm gonna look for ways to make it work and if it doesn't work I'll end up having to get a different actuator. I've decided to mount the actuator right along the bottom side of this rail. That way I don't have to remove the gas tank. I had thought about putting it inside the rail uh, but I'd have to remove the gas tank and I'd rather not mess with the gas tank and just put it along here and the operating rod it has enough distance to reach the the choke without problem the greater concern will be where to actually mount it so it can get a better amount of travel so the first thing I'm gonna do is because I know I'm going to be drilling this way I'm going to go ahead and remove the, the pull cable that way it doesn't get in the in the way and for that I'll be using a 5 16 bit there it is a 5 16 bit I'll make sure I put it right along the middle. Alright. Now the more important thing will be keeping it situated where I mounted, where I drilled the first one so I don't drill it in two different spots. I'm going to go ahead and drill the first one just to be on the safe side. So I'll go ahead and center punch this one. Try to get a little deeper. Alright, now I'll go ahead and drill it. that drilled go ahead and bring in the tap there we go we have the first one tapped so now we can go ahead and mount it and then mark the second hole with the drill bit Now I'm ready to mark my second hole, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Let's see if I can just swing this out of the way. Looks like I can. gotten the actuator mounted and secured I've put the rod in there that's gonna operate the choke and since the choke is gonna have since the actuator to engage the choke is gonna have to go outward I'm gonna go ahead and position it to where it needs to be in order to be able to, to actuate so what I'm gonna do is put this one at the furthest that it'll go and rest the rod right here on top of the run on top of the uh, choke at the run position All right, I did a little bit of work off camera as you can see I did mount this on camera 
but the linkage and the the return i i couldn't figure it out i tried recording it but i had to remove a bunch of stuff to to figure it out and eventually i did get it to where it works and now i'll just walk you through it and save you some time and save you all the thinking that i did so this rod if you do buy the same exact part number that i ordered for this one you mark it at an inch and a quarter from the end i didn't have to cut it at all so an inch and a quarter from the end and that's where you mark it and you bend the 90 into it and you uh bend it just a little a little further i would say maybe not quite 100 degrees but 95 96 degrees just a little bit over the 90 uh to be able to to mount it straight up right here and that way you can use this retainer that is included in the package with the solenoid and the retainer includes two screws to attach to any kind of rod or something uh, or to this uh, rod here but it actually worked out perfectly where one of the screws uh, can can uh, capture the end of the spring here and the spring that I ended up using I'll show you here from the Harbor Freight kit is this spring right here this one right there so hopefully that shows up for you and this is the spring right here. I didn't have to stretch it. And it's not forcing the solenoid too much to where it's bending outward or anything. So it's pretty well stretched right here. And it doesn't put way too much tension. And to secure it to the other end, I went to this uh, Peacock fitting uh, coming out of the gas tank. And I just put a zip tie around it. If anything, over time, the zip tie will dry uh, and crack. And that can be replaced but at least I'm not drilling any holes that's what I was hoping not to do uh, I was thinking that I would have to drill a hole right here to get it secured there uh, which would make the the angle a little more comfortable for the for the actuator but this ended up being closer and uh, it doesn't seem to make it work too hard it does aim outward a little bit when it when it actuates but uh, this will certainly help Another thing that I've changed that yeah, it just developed over time, I ended up changing the location of where I wanted the actuator to be. So now the actuator uh, will be different from the first video, where in the first video it was pulling in to actuate, and now it's actually gonna push outward. So it's gonna go out to, to engage the choke. See how it says start right there? And it's going to go in to disengage and you can still manually work the, the choke. So now I'll go ahead and, and uh, work it with this 12 volt battery. Here we go. So it's pushing out. And as soon as I release it, it comes back to normal. And there we go. Now it's working. So now that this is fine, which this seemed to be the hardest part for me, I'm going to move on to popping open this panel and, uh, and look at some of the wiring, how that's going to work out. So in this next portion of the video, I will be mounting the Arduino box in this corner of the generator. So this is the front panel and I have that taken apart right now for wiring. And this is the side of the generator head and this is the back side of it so this would be the exhaust right here and I'll try to get it far away from the exhaust to where it's not so hot and away from anything else that's uh, that can damage this so since it'll be hard mounted onto the frame it shouldn't get too much vibration but I guess we'll see in the future so I'm going to flush mount it like this by drilling two screws through the back of it and it'll be these self-tapping stainless screws so let's go ahead and get started with that so the first thing I'll do is open up the box and uh, expose the inside of it so I can start working on it so I'll set the cover to the side and I'll see where it is that I need to drill so I'm gonna have it like this so first I'll drill my holes and I see two good spots there where where these screws will fit so there's some holes let's see if I can get it in camera 
they're pre-marked right there there's one right there another one right there so I'll go ahead and drill in the center of those and these screw heads are not bigger than that so I'll go ahead and use this magnet as a support so the drill bit doesn't go into the concrete okay get these burrs out of here there we go so now that the holes are made I'll go ahead and use those holes for marking the generator like this so I'll go ahead and align it to where I feel most comfortable with it I think right there is fine that one's been marked there we go right there So now I'll drill that one with a slightly smaller bit, one eighth. There we go. And now that I have that one, I'll go ahead and get the first screw threaded. Hopefully it doesn't give me too much trouble. Didn't, didn't even put up a fight. Alright. That looks nice and flush. And now I can go ahead and mark my second hole. Alright. Since it's not so tight, I'll go ahead and swing it out of the way. And now I'll go ahead and pre-thread it. Worked just fine. There we go. It's nice and flush with this surface here. I can go ahead and put that cover back on to keep any contaminants from going in here. There we go. Now it's mounted on there and we can start working on our cable. So now to feed the wires in, you'll see the Cat 6 already fed into that bushing right there. And it comes out to right here so here it is right here I'll go ahead and pull I'm go ahead and get this pulled in and I'll be right back I'm gonna go through how to strip this now that we have it here so this time we can actually use that pull string just score it a little bit like before this time you don't have to worry so much because you're here at the end of the cable and if you do damage it uh, you're probably going to cut it here anyway but now you can use this pull string and the way this pull string works is it makes a spiral around it and it can be used for cutting the insulation so you see where it starts right there at least the way I learned to, to work with that is make a tiny little score right there just a little cut into the insulation and that way you can make a little opening and you can start pulling it so now that I've gone ahead and stripped this uh, cat 6 all the way back I went ahead and put some insulation not insulation uh, heat shrink right here uh, at the end and I've already broken out my blue which is going to be for the actuator circuit so I'll go ahead and separate these and get into terminating them. So if you remember when I terminated in the box, 
solid colors went to common and the the striped would go to uh, to the normally open or normally closed and in this one we're gonna go to normally closed uh, which is already terminated in the box so this is my common side and this is gonna go to ground so I'm just going to splice this one into this black ground right there and then this striped uh, white and blue is going to uh, wire nut with this wire which I've I just added a piece to the uh, to the actuator wire because it was too short so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so this one will go right here with the black so now I'll go ahead and use one of these There we go. And then I'll go ahead and wire nut these two together. So I'll go ahead and cut them a safe distance to where I can zip tie them back onto this uh, piece of wire here, right there. So I'll go ahead and cut them right here. Then I'll bring in my wire nut. Now this connection is nicely secure. Now I can secure this portion, but for now, I'm not gonna zip tie it until I'm done with the rest. All right, so I'm sorry I may have skipped some of the wiring, but now that I'm back, I have completed the wiring, and now I will go through it describing uh, everything that I did. So the number one thing that I did is here in the Arduino, in the relay, you'll notice that, let me try to get the light on there, that I've moved the ignition circuit from normally open to normally closed, and I'll show you why. So now I'll go over to the panel and show you what went on there. So here in the panel, I stated before, the orange would be ignition circuit, blue would be choke, green would be start, and brown would be spare. So to start, I wrapped up the brown and secured it to where it's not touching anything. Orange, I've connected to the ground on the ignition circuit. So if we follow it here, here's the ground for the ignition circuit. I cut it. Here's the other end for it. And I interrupted it with a normally closed because this one, for, it to, for the generator to turn off, needs to be a complete circuit. So what I'm doing is I'm opening the circuit during the start sequence. And when the relay turns off, it returns to normally closed, and that keeps the ignition circuit turned off. So now moving on to the, to the actuator for the choke. This is the incoming ground for the actuator. And you'll see that that one is returning back to the, to the relay. And that one's terminating into the Arduino relay on the common side. And then the blue one right here, let's see if we could get a look at it. Here it is, right there. The blue solid, right there. It's terminating here at the case ground. And you'll see it's wrapped up with the green because that's part of the starter circuit. So now moving on to the starter circuit. For the starting circuit, I said I was going to use green, so here's green, and you'll see that the solid is coming down to this ground terminal right there, and there it's getting case ground, and the other end, the green and white, is continuing on right here, you'll see it continue right there, 
and it splices in way back here with this automotive splice into the black and white if you're looking at the switch like this it will be this one right there that is the starter circuit so as soon as you crank it all the way to the top since this switch internally is upside down this one is going to become a complete circuit with ground and instead of using the ground here on the switch I decided to use a uh, case ground so to conduct the test I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the whole thing and do it outside I'll I'll come back with an update on cranking it uh, once I get it outside now that I'm reassembling it I'll show you how the wiring goes here and the wiring is coming in right here I spliced in additional pieces and uh, put some heat shrink on it to make it weather resistant and these pieces going in one of them right here this one here becomes ground and this one is terminating to the wire going back to the relay and this one right here becomes positive and I just spliced in a piece came back out went into here use this uh, part of the panel as a chase and then just came back out here and this will terminate to the positive side of the battery and then my cat 6 coming out of the box is terminating in here and it's coming in through this bushing here and the power wire I'm gonna make a plug to be able to connect it to the battery and disconnect it anytime before going outside I will make a few changes to the code and there's my computer and data cable so I will go in there and screen record the Arduino IDE so you could get a look at this sketch and I'll also paste it in the description box. So let's go over to the Arduino IDE. Before going into the Arduino IDE, I'll show you how I connected it. So I went ahead and pulled off the relay shield and I took out the, the receiver. That way I can plug straight into it right there. So now I'm plugged into the Arduino and the reason why I've pulled the shield off is because all of these relays still operate under 5 volts. So even with this data cable, it'll start the generator because the Arduino is only running the script. So now that it's connected, you'll see here is the data cable and there is the Arduino IDE. And as soon as I connect it to the USB port here, the Arduino starts running. So if this were connected to it, it would be running the generator right now. So now let's go ahead and go into the Arduino IDE. Now that we're in the Arduino IDE, I'll show you the part of the code that is most important. This right here is all the assignments to the pins. So because the count on the Key Studio Relay uh, Shield is not accurate, it doesn't say one, two, three, four. I went ahead and labeled them here, ignition, actuator, starter, and spare. And then going down here, I've also put some comments behind each, each of these uh, commands. That way you can see what's happening. So I'm taking pin 7, putting it high, which is on. And that's switching the ignition on. Uh, there's a delay of 1.5 seconds. These are milliseconds right here. And this is allowing me 1.5 seconds to start it. And now I have pin six, choke actuator on, waiting again for 1.5 seconds. And that's when the starter comes in from pin five and it turns the solenoid on for the starter. And it cranks for 2.5 seconds. Next, the pin five will go low, which is off. And that will be starter solenoid off. And then, here I have it 3.5 seconds, wait 3.5 seconds with the choke still on, and then here we'll turn, we'll turn the choke actuator off after those 3.5 seconds. And for real world use, I will have it set to eight hours. That will be the longest the generator will be able to run unsupervised. But for this test, I'm only gonna run it for 30 seconds. If it can run for 30 seconds and stop, then the eight hours will be successful as well. So then I put it to stop. If generator has not been turned off by now, after the eight hour period or during this test, 30 seconds, uh, stop the generator for cooling and refueling.
So let's switch back over to the generator so we can go outside and run it. So now for the moment we've all been waiting for, now the fuel is on. Power is plugged into the Arduino. So the Arduino did everything it was supposed to do and right now I have it uncovered because I will go back into the code in a little bit once I'm happy with uh, the testing and I'll put in the permanent time which would be eight hours. From this angle you'll be able to see the actuator in the background and the Arduino. So let's go ahead for another test start. I'll stand out of the way. So now that it has successfully run and turned off, the relay is still on so all I have to do now is turn it off. And that's it. So now I'll go into the IDE one more time and show you how to save the, the last uh, setting that I'm going to put on there and that's to run it for 8 hours. So before going to the Arduino IDE I need to figure out for how many milliseconds I will have the generator running. So for that all I'm doing is 8 hours times 60 minutes gives me 480 minutes times 60 seconds gives me 28,800 times 1,000 which is in milliseconds and that gives me 28,800,000 milliseconds. So I'll go ahead and just remember that and now we'll go over to the Arduino IDE. So now that we're in the Arduino IDE we'll just scroll down to where it says 30,000 and we'll type in 28,800,000. That gives us 28,800,000 and I'm going to go over here to where it says uh, the comment about testing because this is no longer a test script and now it's set to run for eight hours so I'll go ahead and run one more test just to see if it's gonna pass the, the 30 seconds I'll maybe run it for a few minutes and uh, and then I'll get back now that it's all buttoned up I'm gonna go ahead and run one more test and then for this one I'll step away for a while and just let it run and then I'll come back later and update you on how well it did so I'll go ahead and hit the remote from here. So I'm going to step away for a little bit, let it run, I'll be right back. So the Arduino has now been running for over 30 minutes. And the Arduino is doing great. You can see it's still illuminated. So now I'll go ahead and shut it off. See if I can get it in view. There we go, ran just well. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it down where it goes and cover it up. I'll go ahead and do one more test start.
Thanks for watching. So here and this. Butter for 75 and then we'll just make the transfer.